up everyone, it's Kirtan Singh here and I'm back with a brand new video. Today marks the 20th anniversary of Star Wars The Phantom Menace and I'm not sure when I will release this video based on either the premiere in America or the premiere in Australia. So I'm not sure when this film will go up, when this video will go up, sorry. But whenever it goes up, it will be on the date of one of the 20th anniversaries for The Phantom Menace. So The Phantom Menace is probably one of the most decisive Star Wars films out there. It was the first film of the prequel trilogy and the first film to come out since the original trilogy. I really loved The Phantom Menace as a kid. A lot of people hate on Jar Jar, a lot of people say even when they were kids they hated Jar Jar. I don't hate Jar Jar, I still find some of what he does funny and really entertaining to a core. But I really love, as you can tell by the thumbnail, Jar Jar putting up his thumbs up and it's... it's it's so funny, there are so many moments you laugh at, maybe because it's a meme, maybe because it's a joke, but I find Jar Jar entertaining. And that's probably going to turn a lot of people off from actually watching this review, but you know, if you hate prequels, the prequels, if you hate the fact that I like the prequels, you know, you're in the min minority now, because a lot of people now actually really love the prequels and appreciate them, and it makes me kind of happy because I always enjoy the prequels. As a kid, The Phantom Menace was my favorite Star Wars film out of the whole bunch. So there were six at the time. It was my favorite Star Wars film. I really enjoyed Darth Maul. He was my favorite villain. I really enjoyed Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan's been my favorite character forever. And Qui-Gon was this really cool Jedi. He meditates during the pod race. He meditates when he's fighting Darth Maul. And it's really what a Jedi should be. And the whole film, I believe it's too complex for what was meant to be told at the time. The CGI, the world that George Lucas wanted to build, you know, he didn't have the resources to do it then to a great extent um, that holds up today. But from when he did it, they're amazing. Like, if you say the CGI doesn't hold up, I would say 20-30% of the CGI doesn't hold up. But there's a good amount of CGI which is really good regarding today's standard, especially when you consider the type of films and the type of CGI we do get regarding sci-fi films and stuff in today's society. That said, there are a few places where the CGI is bad. It's not necessarily that the CGI itself is bad, it's the way that they're composited onto the live action scenes. And yes, people will say almost every actor, almost every scene was shot in front of a green screen, but that is true. But you also have to remember that a lot of the arenas, a lot of the scenes were filmed on miniatures as well. That's why they got the actors green screened onto the miniatures. This film, I feel like I'm not really talking about the story that much, but the story is also very complex. While we have Anakin being introduced as a young kid, which, you know, isn't the best idea. I think he should have been introduced older, maybe have flashbacks to when he was first introduced to the Jedi Order. But otherwise, I think that the whole idea of introducing him on Tatooine, having the whole trade federation, having this whole political idea and creating this universe, expanding it to an era where there wasn't an empire, there was actually a galactic senate, is pretty good. While the dialogue does let down these scenes at times, I think that the story is good enough to entertain you and to have you wondering what more is there. The fall of the Jedi begins with this film as the Dark Lord Sidious. He really plants the seeds for what is to come in future movies leading up to the events of A New Hope. But the fact that there's a Jedi out there called qui who refuses to be on the council, who is knowledgeable in the sense that he can follow these prophecies and also meditate during a battle. You don't see that all that often in the recent incarnations of lightsaber battles and movies itself. Qui-Gon, during the fight with Darth Maul, which is very well choreographed, yes, there are one or two th moments where you can actually see that the lightsabers aren't going to hit them. In a battle itself, you know, I don't think I would hit every shot I make with a lightsaber, every swing I make. I don't think in any real battle that's going to happen. So I let these flaws go. It's nothing compared to a person who hasn't been trained with a lightsaber being able to kick three people with one foot, especially when the foot's like that. If you don't get what I mean by that, I'm referring to Rey in The Last Jedi. But nonetheless, this movie is pretty good in what it tries to do. I think it is too complex for when it was made. If it was made now, I think it would have been better executed. The writing could have still used a lot of work, obviously, but I think George Lucas's direction and the way he went with the story, what he planted the seeds for, are really good. The CGI doesn't hold up the best to today, but I think for the most part, you can appreciate that when it was made, it was really good. The same way you look back at the practical effects of the prequel, oh, original trilogy, sorry, and while it may not look 
perfect. You say that looks real, that looks good. And considering that George Lucas created a planet which is one whole large city, you know, I think it's pretty commendable that the movie looks the way it does. The characters, as I discussed earlier, Anakin could have been older, I believe, and I think that it would have been better to have him already as a Jedi. But I love the opportunity to see Qui-Gon, to see a young Obi-Wan, to see Yoda as he's young. I watched the version where there's a puppet Yoda. I don't think it looks that bad, but I definitely think this puppet Yoda looks better than the Yoda in The Last Jedi. Something just different. At least it looks younger, a bit too young, but at least he looks younger than what he would be in um, uh, Empire Strikes Back. We also get that iconic scene, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate leads to suffering, and it's one of my favorite Yoda quotes. I don't think people quote that enough, but it's really good. You also have Padme Amidala, and I think the way that she acts as a queen is pretty good. I think a lot of people say that it's bad acting, it's bad writing, but as a queen she's very formal, and the fact that Kira Knightley and um, Natalie Portman can both put on the same voice and you can put them next to each other as a queen and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So there's a lot of props there to the makeup artists, to the actors themselves who are able to pull that off. The costumes are great in this movie, the fight scenes are entertaining with the ones on Tatooine, the pod race is amazing, and to anyone who complains that the ca camera is always going one way, that's how you film a race. You don't have the camera going one way and then having that go the other way because that makes it look like the characters are moving backwards. So I saw that in one of the reviews and I can't remember exactly who it was, Jeremy Johns or Chris Stockman, whoever they were, I don't know. So that's how it works when you do a race of some sort. So the camera angles in that pod race is entertaining, the CGI is really good and I really love that pod race scene. It's not too long for me, none of the fights are too long. I think the battle droids are really good, funny at times. I find the lightsaber battle obviously between Darth Maul, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan to be really entertaining and that brings us to the music. Duel of the Fates, you also have the invasion theme of Naboo, and they're really good. You also have the Gungan City reveal music. It's beautiful. To be honest, you also hear some seeds of Kylo Ren's theme when the um, Star Cruiser with Qui-Gon and such, they land on Tatooine. <laughs> Uh, trumpet, trombone, brass section, which really sounds similar to Kylo Ren's theme, and I think that's a really cool callback technically to the first time we arrive on Tatooine where Anakin is to Kylo Ren in the sequel trilogy. Overall, this film is pretty decent, it is not the best in the Star Wars franchise, but at the same time, the story and the complexity of the film is there and it is enough to grasp your attention, even though some of the acting and most part writing are poor at times. I would give this film a 6 out of 10.